Hello dear children, welcome once again to your channel Computer Science with Meena Dobra. Hope all of you are doing great. Hope all of you are healing and hearty. Well, I'm back with part 3 of the Letters Code series that I recently started in which I'm taking up string-based codes in Python. And let's see what is part, uh, what is the third code in this series. The third code reads, Bacha, print the count of vowels and consonants present in a string entered by the user at runtime. And this comparison has to be case insensitive. Fine. So if a user will enter a string, you have to pick up how many vowels are there, how many consonants are there, and you will be giving a combined count of uppercase lowercase vowels and combined count of uppercase lowercase consonants. So let us take one example that suppose if this is the example string Python came in 1991. Fine, let's quickly mark the cons let's quickly mark the consonants. So this is consonant, this is consonant, this is consonant, consonant, n is a consonant, c is a consonant, m is a consonant, n is a consonant. Let's quickly count how many are these? 8. So count of consonants, my code, second output of my code should be count of consonants 8. And let's count the vowels, a, e, i, o, u, v, tick, this is also v, and then e is, v, is a vowel, and i is a vowel, so the total count of vowels is 4. So this is the out, this should be the output of your script. Count of vowels is equal to 4 and count, count of consonants is equal to 8. And rest everything else in this uh, string will be ignored. Like spaces will be ignored. Digits will be ignored. Only the alphabets like the 26 alphabets from A to Z. You all know that from A to Z there are 26 alphabets. Bacha. And in these uh, we have 5 vowels. And there are like uh, 21 consonants, 21 consonants. So we have to just filter the consonants and the vowels from the set of alphabets that will appear in a string. So let's get started with the dry run of the code first as we have been doing already. Here's the code, the screenshot of the code. And here I have the dry run table. And in this video, I'll fill it in front of you. Fine. So this is my code. Let me just analyze it for all of you line by line. I have taken two counts, uh, counters and initialized them to zero. Fine. In both my previous parts, I've told you that why we initialize the counters with zero just in case we don't come across that thing in a string, then the count will remain zero. So VC is for vowel count and CC is for consonant count. Both these counters I have initialized to zero. Fine. Then in this, I am asking the user to enter a string using the input function. And this is my string object, S. Fine. Then I loop over using my value-based loop as, uh, as I prefer using a value-based loop when I'm not as such string, uh, like, uh, you know, string uh, whenever I am not, uh, like, in, we can skip, you know, index-based loop in a string because strings are immutable. There is no change uh, that a user can do to any string element. So value-based loop would be preferred as long as you are accessing a element and you are checking it for something. So you are accessing a string element by element. So this for loop variable, loop variable is C. Okay. And the sequence is the string that is S. Loop variable C and my string object, which is my sequence, its name is S. So when I will use this loop for C in S, in every iteration, one one element of S will come into C and then we can check this character that has been fished into C, whether it's a vowel or a consonant and accordingly update the counters. Now, in this code, you know, we have to, I have used this nested if, bacha. I have used a nested if. So I have, my first if condition, my main if condition is that my string, whatever character I'm fetching from, from my string, is it an alphabet? So for that, I have used the is alpha function with the character that is being fetched. Now is alpha returns true if the uh, you know the character and the if its argument is not the argument if the its invoking object is a letter it can be a to z small any of them or a to z capital any of them like it can be a string also but here we are dealing with single character so I am just mentioning a to z small a to z capital for detailed uh, view of is alpha function you can refer to the playlist link that I will share in the description 
uh, there is a video on these functions, separate video on these functions. You can refer to it. So is alpha takes uh, is alpha function returns true if the uh, if its invoking object is purely made up of a to z letters. They can be small. They can be capital. And I could have even written this condition like this if c dot is alpha. This I had mentioned in part one video also. I don't have to write like equal to equal to true because its boolean value is its result is a boolean value. If it will be true, only then it will enter the body of if. Fine. So this instead of writing explicitly true, we can even write the uh, implied thing that is c dot is alpha. Now, first of all, I have to check whether the letter that is being fetched from the string, the character which is being fetched from the string, is an alphabet. Then, if it is an alphabet, instead of checking for 21 consonants, I can easily check for five vowels. And like we are co considering it to be a case insensitive comparison, then there will be 10 vowels. Small case A E I O U and capital A E I O U. And here I've used this membership operator, which is in fine because instead of giving 10 different comparisons using relational operator equal to equal to. And joining them with logical operator, or you can straight away write in and the string that you are. You if the character is an alphabet, then check if it is a part of the string. If it is a member of the string, obviously if it is a vowel. If the alphabet that you are fetching is a vowel, first check if C is an alphabet, then check if that alphabet is a vowel. Fine. If it is a vowel, then increment the VC counter, vowel count counter by one. And if it is an alphabet but not a part of the string, that means it is apart from A E I O U. It is a consonant. Then in the else part, increment the consonant count uh, counter by one. Fine. So you understood. We'll first fetch a character from the string, then check if it is an alphabet. If it is an alphabet, then this nested if else will check if that alphabet is a vowel. It's easier to check for vowels as their number is less. If it is not a vowel. Then we we'll, it's a consonant because if it's an alphabet and not a vowel, it's a consonant. So in the else part, we will increment the consonant counter. Fine. And then after the loop is over, we will display the overall count of both of them: vowel counts of vowel VC and counts of consonant CC. Let's try run this code, children. So for my sample string, this time I've taken a string. Python came in 1991. Fine. So I'll write it over here. My sample string this time is Python came. In 1991, and I've stored it in S. Fine. The user has entered. It's been stored in S. So here I've uh, made my dry run uh, table, in which I've put the first condition C dot is alpha. Then if it's true, uh, then I have checked if C is in A E I O U vowel, and if it's not in A E I O U, then if it's false, then uh, I'm going to increment the C C counter. If it's true, I'm going to increment the B C counter. So let's check both my counters initialized with zero B C C C, and then my first character that is going to come from the string is capital P. Its is alpha will be true, bacha. Then I'll check if its is alpha is true. If it is like P in A E I O U, no, it's not there in A E I O U. That means this condition is false. In that case, my vowel counter will not be incremented, but my consonant counter will be incremented by one. It is going to become one. Fine. I move on to the next character of the string, which is Y, which is now going to be fetched in C. Its is alpha is true, but it is not a vowel. It's uh, you see in A E I O U. Like y is not a part of A E I O U string. Again, my vowel counter will not be incremented, but my consonant counter will now change to two. Okay, plus one, one plus one two. Then I'll the next character that will be fetched into C is T. It is T. And for T also, this condition like uh, it's true is that is alpha is true, but it is not a vowel. It's false. So again, my vowel counter will not be incremented, but my C C counter two plus one it is going to become three. Next character that will be fetched is H. It's a it's an alphabet. Fine. H is an alphabet, but it is not a vowel. Fine. So in that case, my vowel counter will remain zero, and my consonant counter will become four. Fine. The next character to be fetched will be O. It's an, it's an, is it's an alphabet. Is this alpha is true? And now it's, you know, a small O, which is a part of this string. So it's, 
uh, this condition becomes true. C in A E I O U. Now, when C in A E I O U condition becomes true, we are going to update the vowel counter. So now, vowel counter opens its accounts. Consonant count remains the same. Four. Fine. Now, N. Next character is alpha is true, but it's not a vowel. So, like my vowel counter will remain unchanged, but my consonant counter will be incremented by one. It is going to become five. Fine. Now, space. It's not an alphabet. Is is alpha will be false. So I'm not considering this this condition when the outer if condition is false, the inner if will not be considered at all. Wo enter in yoga the if block will not be entered. So I've put a dash over here. It's not uh, going to be checked, and my both my counters will be carry forwarded. Like no change in my counters. Rather they'll remain one and five respectively. B C C C one five respectively. Next character that is capital C. Fine is alpha is true now, but it's not a vowel, so vowel counter remains one, and consonant count changes to six. Five plus one six. Now comes small a. It's an alphabet and it is also a vowel. So now my vowel counter will change to two. My consonant count remains the same. Child. Fine m m is alpha is true, but it's not a vowel, so vowel counter remains same. Consonant counter else part. Consonant count becomes seven children. Fine. Small e is alpha is true and it is also a vowel. So the membership operator condition also becomes true. So now my vowel count becomes three. My consonant count remains seven. Fine. Then space as previously done. It is alpha is false. So it's the second condition will not be checked and my counters remain unchanged. Three seven. Fine. Now comes i. In ka i. Okay. It's it's is alpha, it's is alpha is true, and it's also vowel. So my vowel counter will change to four, bacha, but my consonant count remains the same. Next comes in, fine, in. It's is alpha is true, but it is not a vowel, fine. So my vowel counter remains four, but my consonant count increases to eight. Seven plus one eight. For all the other. Uh, Characters that will be fetched in the subsequent iterations like space uh, is alpha is false. No change in counters. Tick for all the uh, remaining characters. One, it's not an alphabet. My counters remain unchanged. Nine also, nine also, one also. I've taken them all together. My counters will remain unchanged. So the last update to my counter was done over here. Here. And this is my final count. Fine number. V C value of V C variable is four, and value of C C variable is eight. So over here, my V C count will be shown as four, and my consonant count will be shown as eight. Fine. So I hope this dry run is absolutely clear to all of you. Let's quickly try this code in Python, and I'll run this code, and I'll write the same thing. Let me write Python came in. 1991. So see, vowel count is four and consonant count is eight. Bacha. And let me just uh, run this code again. And this time I should enter a string full of digits. Both my counters are zero. Let me run this again. And this time let me write a one two three four underscore e r t h. So there are three consonants and two vowels. See. This is how you know you can execute this program by providing it different input strings and see the output for yourself. Fine. So this was about the third code in this series. I hope you have uh, found it useful and uh, do watch all the parts. I'll share the playlist link, bacha, and I'll be back with more such codes, interesting codes along with their dry run for all of you. And let me know in the comment section. how you felt after watching this video so till we meet again take care beta happy learning god bless you bye bye